Hello to all my friends out there. Hi, you guys. I hope everyone is doing okay. Okay, this video is Perpetual Preparedness Survival Mode as a Lifestyle. And what brought this on is Hurricane Milton. I hope everyone is okay. That is, this is the second one. First Hurricane Helene, now Hurricane Milton. Uh, they're saying if you live in a mobile home, it's not gonna be survivable. Well, that's horrifying. So I thought, you know, the, the disasters are getting worse and closer and that's to be expected. And so I'm gonna to talk to you about that in a minute. Okay, um, they're saying one of the reasons that the hurricane, I just have Dollar Tree uh, black tea and I like to drink it with uh, coffee creamer to give myself a little dairy. Okay, the best powdered milk, let's see if I have one down here. Still cleaning the cupboards, it takes me forever. Okay, under ideal, salute, under ideal, um, the ideal would be for uh, powdered milk is not coffee, creamer, and water. That's just for like something happens and you don't have any uh, milk, this will work. I like to, uh, I bought this one at Walmart. Uh, last month I bought quite a bit of coffee creamer uh, just to make sure. Um, today I was doing housework still, but I did make it to the gym. Okay, the best powdered milk, in my opinion, is this one walmart dry whole milk but this is 14 dollars and that's for a two pack two pounds seven ounces so this will make uh 32 cups so if you drank one cup a day this would last a month but most people like if you eat it on cereal or drink milk it's two cups a day so that would be $30 just on uh, milk. So if times are tough and that's not a possibility or you're just making some little batch of potatoes or something, you can use your coffee creamer. So, okay, so they're saying with Hurricane uh, Milton, the uh, water surge would be 12 feet. Like think of a pool, 12 feet. Hit, and they say what's even worse is the debris is dangerous. You know, it, uh, the water carries the debris. We get debris. Uh, when we had the hurricane here, that's one of the things I was doing when I was, I go, I, I don't know what I'm like. I was like a laborer. It was really awful. I was clearing the debris out of our storm drain so um they say if our dams breach like if the dams north breach prepare for 12 feet of water and so they're saying with hurricane milton 12 12 feet of water is not survivable so you might be thinking why do you even worry about that this is earthquake country people Southern California, there's the, um, we've had um, really bad earthquakes. When I was a kid that cracked the, um, this guy at our church, the, the entire slab of the house cracked. And in recent times, they built a freeway right on that stretch, which I thought was nuts. Also, a lot of this, um, area is actually a riverbed and people don't know it i live on a hill and fortunately there's two ways out because one way is going to be totally um i'm not going to be able to get down there i'm not going to be able to get past the water okay so that is why i thought you know we're just going to have to start living as if the next disaster is on the way 
So um, today I'm not cooking because I had the rest um, of my chicken wings. Here they are, I have one jar left. And I put the lid, but I plan on eating this. So that was really good. I had enough meal, me, enough food for literally uh, all day today and dinner last night. And uh, these chicken wings probably cost me $3. And then these are two cans of brisket that I um, can last night. And really, it's very easy to do. I showed you, but the thing that is, and I don't leave anything unattended in, in the house. I watch my food because it's at a roaring uh, boil. I want to show you guys something. I wanted to do discount shopping and they had these canning jars and these are the nice ones. Uh, th these are smaller. Uh, than the Dollar Tree ones. But these pints are the perfect. Here's the Dollar Tree one. See? Oh, I think this one's smaller. This this Dollar Tree one's bigger. That's what. But you can see that this smaller pint is more than enough space for the uh, one pound. For a pint, you you can can so easy. Um one um, pound of meat. So I got these for $5.99. So that gives me 10 jars. I have some, my daughter-in-law has them, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to make her can. I go, can all the stuff in your freezer. So anyway, um, and I have one frozen in my freezer. So this is enough meat for eight days. So even if you're like in a motel room, if you have a hot plate and you can bring a pot to a roaring boil, you're going to be able to can. So I'll show you, this is what I can in. I just um, finished my saucepan. I got new pans for Christmas anyway, and I can't find the lid, but I know I have one. So I just put the jar in there and see as long as you can get the water up past the food and put a lid on it and these you had to boil for three hours that is okay if i should get caught in some storm hopefully they say that the stores are totally cleaned out people and then i i had canning supplies but i can't find them but I did find this. And so uh, today, this is still warm. I canned um, strawberry jam. I wasn't planning on it. Here it is. Uh, I want to tell you a good recipe. Okay, it turned out really good. Uh, here's, I didn't water bath can this because it was only, let me show you. Okay, here it is. You can just eat, we used to call this cooked fruit. I got a good video for you guys. If you find someone who can, can explain it, you can easily catch on. So um, today in the markdown section, they had two pounds of strawberries and they were they smell really good and, and these were a dollar i thought ah it when i find fruit for a dollar or today they had all kinds of meat but i said no you are canning the meat in your freezer so i um just i'll tell you how i made the jam it's really easy and it's really good this one um I water bath can that and for jam it only takes 10 minutes so that's and then I was going to say if you have one of these funnels it's so much easier with something sticky like the um, jam with the meat you're just pressing it down in the jar I want to mention something I might forget you know I have the micro memory when you start canning 
with a cold product, like your meat is not hot, you, you put your uh, cans in a cold pan. But when your jam is hot, because you just cooked it, you put it in a hot, it was almost boiling. So I put my jar in and I brought it up to a boil so it, it didn't crack your jars. And this is a, a th these Dollar Tree jars are fine. So what if they crack? Why do it? All right, um, okay, the video was how to can strawberry jam, wise guide, W-Y-S-E guide, and I'll show you in a minute. Wash the jars, this was a great tip. Wash the jars in hot soapy water, and then just take a pan or a tea kettle and pour the boiling water over the rims and in the jars and let it set there for a while and then just uh, pour it out and drain your jar and you've sterilized your jars. Now, I didn't sterilize my lids because they're brand new. I just washed them with soap and water and I dried them off. Okay, so that is a great tip of how to sterilize it. You don't have to put them in the boiling water. You don't have to put them in the hot stove. All I had was strawberries and water. Okay. My jam is a little bit loose, but I like it that way, and I'll tell you why in a minute. So I had um, strawberries, and I covered my strawberries just about to the top with water, and then for two pounds, I put half a cup of sugar, more or less, whatever you want. And then I just chop my, um, I chop my strawberries in the water, like that and then i turned the heat up on high and just boiled them down until i got the consistency i like then i turned off the heat and i added lemon juice so i stockpile this and vinegar so i'm always going to have vinegar because you need vinegar to a can here's one Also to make uh, cottage cheese. Okay, uh, okay, so now cook your jam down. Fill the jars, so that's where this thing came in. Uh, wipe the rims with vinegar in the, di in the Amish um, videos. They just wipe the, the lid with maybe some hot water. Uh, but I use vinegar. Put an old towel, like an old hand towel, like this, in the bottom of your pan so your jars don't break. And then boil the water before you put the jam in the water, because you're you just made your jam. But if your if your jam was cold, like if you made it the day before, uh, start your water cold and then start timing when the water boils. And uh, make sure the water is covering the jar higher than the food. And you just boil 10 minutes. A lot of times though, if you wanna just make a um, refrigerator jam, you don't have to boil it. I wanna avoid more stuff in my refrigerator and freezer and I want to can it and I want to get it out of there. That's the whole idea. And then with this canned food, I want to figure out a way I can pack it so that it goes with me if I evacuate. So right now, I'm just trying to get like 10 cans of food because that's enough for a, a month. Okay, so now I want to give you the good recipe with the strawberry jam. You get a strawberry jam. Where is it? And you put, a, you do the speed method. So it would be one cup boiling water, put your jam in, put one cup um, ice, and then melt that in your hot water. I can't believe it. They're saying Jello is falling out of favor. Well, if you make this, it won't. Okay, so when your jello starts to 
not before, but when it starts to get thick like jello, but not quite, you put a little bit of this jam in, maybe a quarter cup and some uh, bananas and stir that around and then finish setting that and that gives you the most delicious uh, jello. Okay, this week I also made, uh, I made applesauce and I'm trying to eat a little bit more fruit. So I'll take this out now. Okay, so that's, that's it on the strawberry jam. So you're not going to be running out of fruit if you make some pancakes, if you make a peanut butter sandwich, if you make some, uh, you could make an awesome strawberry pie. Just uh, make your pie crust, put the strawberry jam, you know, in there and maybe dot a little butter and maybe a little flour, sprinkle a little flour or you can use applesauce. I like to use my applesauce though to make applesauce bread. Okay, so now I have four jars of meat, that's eight meals. I made the applesauce with three uh, apples, which wasn't much. Um, I made homemade peanut butter and what I'm doing is I'm just going through my food storage and uh, this was all peanuts but sometimes you know I think the time before I had some Brazil nuts I had sunflower seeds and you just roast 250 on each side and then blend them until you blend it into peanut butter so you have peanut butter and jam if something happens or you can buy some so now for the food storage, I learned this in line in a grocery outlet. So it was this guy in front of me and he was buying some gourmet um, sausages. And I said, what do you do with that? He goes, sometimes I bake it and make it into, um, into sandwiches and so, like on uh, French bread, and sometimes I eat it on crackers. So they had, I went to Ralph's and they had this chorizo for 166. So I thought I'm gonna start buying some good uh, sausage. So this was 399. So what you're looking for is the good stuff marked down. And so today I had my leftover chicken, which was kind of like chicken, chicken noodle soup and I had some of these sausages that are really tasty it doesn't take much I had homemade um, peanut butter and jam and then I had bought I had bought um, crackers, so today I was at Grocery Outlet, so this is the sliced cheese I bought, so I had cheese, and then I bought this su summer sausage, but tomorrow, and so what the great thing about this is, you can see, because of the fat content, you can freeze this stuff telling me that's one of the things he likes and I go I now like you can freeze this stuff and you can you can get it out of the freezer and just slice it and then you know you can get some crackers and you can uh, watch out for the good stuff tomorrow I'm going to grocery out there. and uh, you have some cheese some peanut butter some soup, some leftover food, and uh, you know, just yummy. This was a pound, so in a week, you need about two and a half pounds of meat no cooking but you can put this in anything 
So I bought a box of crackers because I, for 99 cents, I bought these last week at Grocery Outlet. And so if there's no bread, four crackers are a piece of bread, your lunch meat and four crackers for 99 cents. Here is my uh, black tea from Dollar Tree. Okay. Let me see if this thing is going. I have no, um, I can't wait to get my new AI phone. You know, uh, the AI thing has only been out about a year. A lot of people are saying I'd hate to be without the AI. I could live without it. <laughs> no. Okay, so I got the chorizo and I got the sausage. I got several packages, at least four of these sliced cheeses. So two packages of sliced cheese is enough for a month. And then another thing, because the colder weather comes out, we um, eat a little bit different. If you go and you shop like a grocery outlet and you get the good sardines, they're not bad, especially if you have crackers and so um and sardines um so these sausages are great and you can freeze them so even if they do defrost it's just a couple of minutes so um i have sardines in the the stockpile so now all of this that i have just told you if you have soup three cans tomato chicken noodle and vegetable then uh, you're gonna have soup and sandwiches a lot of times uh, you guys don't see me do it but I eat soup uh, this is kind of new with this um, canned food but if you get into the habit of this you're not gonna be if you're not gonna be half as vulnerable if you have food there's some people who have been saying some pretty nasty things and we will see is the, the FEMA money has been spent. So we have to see about that. Okay, now um, I will be buying six of these packages of cookies. Here they are, because I like to eat cookies with tea. So here's the cookie. So what I did is I just made the cookies and then I stuck them back in the bag. And I've been eating a few of them, so I don't need more cookies tonight. But those are good. I'm going to be buying every flavor I can for around $1.25 at Dollar Tree. So I want six boxes of crackers and I keep my crackers together so I can go, okay, I have six crackers, six bags of cookies. I just started that six boxes of pasta which brings us to the next plan okay i got this really good pasta at ralph's for $1.57 and so my next meal the reason i'm not having the next meal tonight is because i i went to ralph's for one reason and one reason only and that reason was I needed eggs and I cracked two of my eggs. So I learned this on the carnivore channel. Fry a hamburger and make two fried eggs. I don't know why, but that is a cheap, decent meal. So for now, for the next cheap meal, I'm gonna take a little break after the camp. These are heavy meals, you guys. So it's gonna be uh, the rigatoni and then it's going to be my Dollar Tree uh, pasta. So none of this stuff is expensive. So what I do is I cook the noodle, the noodles or the the rigatoni, and then I I'm gonna, I bake the spaghetti. How I do it is just like lasagna. I just layer the noodles, the marinara, and then I have um, in my freezer a large bag of mozzarella cheese and I just layer that up and I bake it but if I didn't have meat I have mushrooms in my stockpile but even if you're totally wiped out once you learn these cheap meals like today oh here's the one I bought 
I bought these at Ralph's. This is really good pasta too. Okay, and then you guys saw me last month. I bought a lot of pancake mix. And when the time is right, I will eat it. So um, three cans of soup is enough for a week. So you need 12 cans for a month. And so when you start buying your food by the week, by the month, then by three months and pretty soon it becomes very easy to buy for a year. So this month what I'm doing is I'm just buying a case. It's going to be an assortment. Like I was low on um, one of my favorites is um, chicken noodle soup. And I put the whole cracker in that and I eat it, but it could be top ramen. So three cans of soup. Okay, now I want to talk about these sides. A small bowl of yogurt. I made homemade yogurt. A small bowl of cottage cheese. A small, okay, when you make the cottage cheese, it's two cups milk and about between two and one quarter cup of vinegar and you just get it almost boiling. You add the vinegar and it'll curdle right away. Let it set there. So then you just strain it and you have your cottage cheese. And when I make cottage cheese, I like to make fry bread because it's delicious and why not use your way? And then Jello, and I gave you my secret Jello recipe. Okay, so now for a month, 10 pints meat. There you have it. And if you keep your eye out, you can get the jars cheap. 10 cans fruit and vegetables because two cans of vegetables is uh, seven, 3.5 each, seven. So if you get 10 cans fruit and vegetables, that should be about enough for a month. And then think about fried bologna. So you have bread with fried bologna and you have your sliced cheese or you can slice, you can use these. But if you have bologna, eggs, and then I bought Diet Coke, the cheap stuff, to make myself um, drink the cheap stuff at night. Okay, I wanna to talk to you about one more thing I'm seeing online. Okay. This thing about the higher consciousness. Okay, a state of personal development or consciousness where a person is free from limitations of their ego and self-concept. Okay, I spent tons of time taking these classes on the ego, the superego, and the id. That is straight out of Floyd. The ego is like what you learn from your environment or your parents. So that's your self-concept, and it's created by those around you in your environment. It may be used to describe a state of liberation from the limitations of self-concept or ego, as well as a state of, here we go, mystical experience in which the perceived separation between the isolated self and the world of God or the unseen world is transcended like transcendental meditation that was why i was resistant to um yoga i thought you don't have to go there just go practice your balance it may also refer to a state of increased alertness or awakening and so i've been studying all kinds of rosicrucianism you're supposed to be aware of what's going on. You're not just supposed to be going on through your day. No, you're aware of every little thing. It takes some practice. Also, this uh, studying of, uh, I studied um, Antoine LaVey. I studied Scientology, uh, all kinds of things. Okay. Transcended, it may also refer to a state of increased alertness or awakening to a new perspective, like the unseen world. Okay, now, the, when Lucifer was cast out of heaven, one way it could have happened, I'm not saying it did, is when he was more dense in his spirit, he fell to earth. And so these higher, 
higher, what do they call it, powers. Like this is one reason I didn't like self-help because, okay, higher power, the man is created a little lower than the angels. That's what the Bible says. I think it's true. So if these angels, it's not that we're getting so high, we're not getting so lofty, is that they are becoming more dense and meeting us down here. A lot of people deny that. They think they're going here, they're going there, they're higher, possibly. I kind of understand where they come from. And so then you're, and so there's, okay, there's this concept that I see a lot. All the bad things that happen to us are ultimately for our own good. Some of us say all the bad things that can happen to us could have a source, which is the evil ones that could be all around us. So now, just to put it into the Christian perspective, I don't do what you want, but this, like, all this bad stuff that is happening is not for our good. Acts 1 8, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Like this concept of powerlessness, like we're, we're helpless. And a lot of times things can happen where we are. Uh, and ye shall witness unto me, so tell others, in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria, Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So we receive this, we don't transcend and get this word, I say, but you can think what you want. I say the higher powers are getting more dense and coming down here. I spent too much time taking science. Okay, and the angels are a little, we're created a little lower than the angels. And when we think our consciousness is higher, that might not be exactly correct, right? So another thing is a lot of these uh, concepts are nothing new. You remember uh, King Solomon, there's nothing new under the sun? Well, it's Buddhism, which was Baal, Baal, Baal in the Bible. It's nothing new. And then um, there's a lot of it. And the thing is, is you're not going to convince that person that it isn't real because it is real. But it's possible that what they think of, that they're ascending is actually something else descending. And we see a lot of this. Uh, we're, we have access on the internet, so we can learn this stuff. That doesn't necessarily mean it's really good for us. So we see all these um, disasters. And so what we're supposed to do is we're watchful. We're, we're, we know that the devil, which a lot of people say there is no devil, is like a ravening lion who's looking to who he can destroy. And so some people are going to be able to elude destruction, not saying we're not going to suffer. So we're watching. So when we, like the people in Florida are told evacuate, it's unsurvivable. And that is a lot easier to do if you have resources. So that's why we want, I, I do this cheap stuff. Um, speaking of survival, when I got divorced, I, you know, it's like the woman divorced, her husband's so unbearable, they get a divorce and they go to kid the kids, kids. We're heading for hell. And usually they go through all kinds of misery. If you have never been divorced, I'm telling you, you cannot imagine. Like, I want to laugh in the face of some of the people that I ever knew because I'm thinking, you are so clueless. I walked for 12 years. I mean, it was a misery every day of my life. So you can say, well, it was for your higher good. Well, it was caused from my ex-husband was basically a terrible husband. That's what it was caused from. But in the end, you know, I raised my son. And so now everybody on the earth takes credit, which is laughable. 
but I have learned most of the uh, most of the real preppers I've ever known. They go, "Oh, you can't believe what I went through," and I'm thinking, "I can believe it." And then what made me start the YouTube channel is I used to work and I used to stand next to people and I knew they were better off than me, but they weren't living better off. So this kind of stuff is so make sure you have a hot plate, whatever you do. This kind of stuff or a barbecue is really going to help you if things get really, really bad. And another thing is if there is no FEMA, that is going to teach us all just how secure we really are. And do we really want the government taking care of us? Because if we do want to go in that direction, and it looks like we're going to, we better be able to take care of ourselves, especially if you're seniors. What's going to happen? Who do you think is going to be, you know, like a sinking ship? Think about a sinking ship. Who gets off first? Women and children. Who, who didn't get health care during the COVID in some countries? So, like, that's why I, I mentioned to you guys, I had this boyfriend who was very well off. And so, um, I forget how it came up in conversation. He goes, oh, yeah, when I was a hobo. I go, a hobo? What the hell does that mean? Well, he had been so poor at one point in time he was living like a bum basically and so you know uh he was very thrifty ever after that i mean i i try to imagine him as like a hobo or like even myself like i think back on the life the crappy life and uh it's like a bad dream but it did ha happen and it will give you a perspective and so that is why when Shasta Cola was on sale, he would go down to the Rite Aid and he would, he would buy, uh, buy Shasta Cola. And then if he, were, if he wanted more, he had my friend, my friend was the one that introduced us, go and buy more cases. And I'm not kidding you, his garage was like a warehouse. He wasn't gonna run out of Shasta Cola. He wasn't, like when he wanted to get vitamin B12 shots, he got them and the neighbor gave them to him. When he wanted to buy Rolex watches, he bought them in Tijuana. And so, you know, a lot of times, what happens is when you're forced to be really, really, um, really cheap to get by, you learn that you get twice as much stuff. That's why you'll notice I buy everything, almost everything marked down. So if I have like a budget of $200 for groceries, is I went to the two different food banks. And on two different occasions, I came home with no food. So that taught me it's not even hard times yet. But if you have $200 for food, and you buy your food in such a way that you buy $400 worth of food, don't you think you're gonna be so much better off? I wanna mention my blouse. Okay, I wrecked all my blouses cooking in them. So what, I go, oh my God. So I took all my blouses, I go, I'm gonna wreck my blouses, and I threw them in the washer with my um, gym clothes, and I put a whole bunch of detergent and all the stains came out. So that is awesome. So now I'm wearing them for five more years. Okay, you guys, I will see you tomorrow. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And God bless you all. Bye, you guys.